Welcome to a brisk morning on the 89 garage where today we will be working on the F-150. So the F-150 has not received very much love from me for a couple years probably. Um, I think the last thing I did to it, besides just like maintenance stuff, was put a radiator in it. And that was when I still lived in Salt Lake, which has been uh, four and a half years ago. So, you know, this, I don't know, a couple months ago I put the uh, the brushes in the alternator so I really can't complain. It's been a great truck. It has like 253,000 miles on it. And today we're going to be doing a pinion seal on it. Let me kind of show you what I woke up to the other morning. So I had it parked over here. This was actually Sunday evening. Uh, today's Friday. But I had it parked right here facing this direction. As you can see, there is no oil right here. All I did was back it in here because it was supposed to snow that night. Actually, it did snow that night, and I actually did drive it to work that day. But the next day when I backed it in again, I noticed that was there. Now, it had been wet and everything. I don't know if I noticed that or not on Monday morning, but Tuesday morning I did notice it. Put my finger in it, give it the give it the old smell test and it's gear oil so I got under here and the pinion seal gave way it's been wet for a while but uh, I figured I had it at least until you know springtime but it gave way on me so we're gonna be doing that today and I've taken and shook the pinion. It is rock solid. I don't think it's got a bad bearing in it. I just think the seal finally gave way at 253,000 miles and 20, how old is this? 25 years old, 24 years old, something like that. This is built in June of 96. So yeah, it's 25 years old. So let's go back in the garage though and I'll just show you what I've bought. Here's our seal. Um, I went over to AutoZone and I was told uh, we have this national seal, we have a Duralast seal. National seal was like, uh, this was about 14 bucks. The other one was uh, just under six. They said, yeah, it's the same thing in a different box. So I asked to see them both. This one says made in Mexico, the other one says made in China. So, uh, and feeling the two, the metal on the Duralast seal just did not feel as thick, uh, nor did the plastic feel as pliable as this national seal. So this is what I came out of there with. Um, the pinion nut is going to be a inch and one sixteenth or a 27 millimeter will do. I went over to Harbor Freight, I went to Home Depot, all they have an inch and sixteenth is 12 point stuff and also chrome sockets we don't want that we're gonna need the impact to get that thing off of there other stuff that I got over while I was at Home Depot I picked up this um, these two paint pens this is meant for you know marking metal when you're welding and stuff like that this it's Milwaukee so it's probably all right but I didn't know just how good they would be. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna be kind of testing those out. I'm gonna start with the Milwaukee. If it works good enough, then I'll just leave this with my welding supply stuff. And a little Loctite to hold that nut back on. We will need to drive this seal back in with something. So I got my, this is my front end service kit 
front wheel bearing service kit actually I should say um, this is um, meant to install uh, wheel bearings on things like the Ford Escape some Mazdas uh, you know pressed in bearings is basically what this kit does but this uh, I've already measured it up this is pretty much perfect with the outside of that seal so we'll be using this to drive it in so the driveline bolts the four bolts that go in the companion flange on the back of the axle they are 12 millimeter 12 point I bought this but it doesn't appear that it's going to work I think this is too big around the edge I've used this for years and yes I've used it with an impact um, we might have to use it again unfortunately but that has taken so many driveline bolts out for a Ford 8.8 it's unreal and it's held up so far um, I will try and use this though if I can so we're going to go ahead and use the method of counting the teeth and marking the pinion nut. I've seen so many different methods that as long as you get that pinion nut in the same spot and just maybe crank her another eighth of a turn, you're going to be fine. So that's what we're going to do today, guys. It has so many miles on it that my goal is just to make this thing stop leaking. And if it holds up for a while, that's great. It has an 8.8 .8 in it. I also have a limited slip, an 8.8 .8 limited slip in the backyard with it's a 31 spline carrier that will go right in there. And I also have a set of 373s. So I'm not looking to do that right now because then I would have to match the front end with the 373 and that's going to require some finding. So my goal is just to get this thing to quit leaking and last me the rest of the winter at least. So right now it is about 45 degrees, which is pretty warm for January in Utah. And the sun is just poking out over the mountain. This is what I've been waiting for. It poked out just as we started this video. So let's get going. Got her all chalked up up here. Both tires, a couple rocks. She's up in the air. A couple little jack stands. Next thing we need to do is get in here, throw her into the neutralis. Oakley Doakley, she's in neutral. So now we can move the drive line around. I brought this, uh, I don't know if you can see that, I brought this jack stand just so I don't gotta remove the drive shaft all the way. I'll just, I don't wanna deal with transmission fluid leaks. Uh, this one is, uh, it is a slip yoke. And it will leak, <clears throat> and I don't want to deal with that. Now on this last one, just kind of got to be careful because yours might uh, break free. I don't know if this one will or not. You just gotta be careful pulling this last one off as it don't hit you in the head. So once this breaks loose, I'll be nice and easy with it. And probably take the rest of it out by hand. Yeah. Enough room out here. Yeah, she's nice and solid. So, yeah, I'm not, I don't think there's an issue at all with this bearing. I just think this seal, uh, you know, 25, 26 years old, whatever, it's just giving way. So, I'm gonna go get some uh, cleaner and clean this up a little bit and then we'll mark everything. Some people will say that you need to mark the drive shaft. But it was not balanced as an assembly, okay? We're good, basically is what I'm trying to tell you. It's got new U-joints on it, fairly new. Miapco U-joints on it, as you can tell. Hopefully you can see that. Those are still in very good shape. So 
it's not flopping around or anything. By the way, I've already checked this, but up here, before you start tearing this thing apart, you might want to make sure that you can get this out because you're going to need to top this thing off when you're done. I've already pulled that out um, the other day to see just how low this is and I, I can stick my pinky in the fluid so this does have enough fluid in it still um, and it still is quite clean. This did not have hardly any metal on it. This is magnetic. Um, this oil has approximately 5,000 miles on it I would guess. Maybe a little less. So it's, you know, I'm just going to top it off. There's no point in replacing on it right now. So I'll go get my stuff, get my 27 millimeter socket while I'm up there too, and we'll, we'll get this thing apart guys. So we're going to mark right there. I also need to count those threads. I'm gonna go get a pick just so I can feel the grooves in it and make sure my eyes aren't deceiving me. One, one, two, oh, we got a three. Basically, it's <laughs> three. Um, so when we tighten this back up, we're gonna go right to this line and then probably, a, I don't know, an eighth of a turn more. We're gonna go ahead and get our 27 up here and go to town Just for another point of reference I'm gonna try this and just see How much force it takes to turn So it's not even an in not even a, not even 12 inch pounds That's the lowest I can go on this thing so <laughs> Yeah all right, see, that's not even gonna work even if I wanted to. I'm gonna put it on the lowest setting just to see if it'll pull it off with that. This impact has three settings. This should not just slide right off. You should need a puller to pull it off. <laughs> but uh, no, we don't. Yeah, mine's got a little bit of wear in it. I mean, you can see right through that oil. It's still like brand new. So for the future, I am going to need a new companion flange. Great. You can find Dorman ones, but I don't, I'm not a big fan. They don't look as good as if you were to buy a Spicer or one from Ford. So that's what I'm going to look for. And I'm going to go get my seal puller and see it moving there she is wow a lot more fluid coming out than I was anticipating the threads on this are actually pretty dang clean this uh, great big washer deal is an oil slinger Timken. Awesome. No pitting at all. Just 100% normal. So, I'm I'm happy about that. So 
so we got this thing uh, cleaned up with some scotch bright looks pretty dang good overall speaking wise if I can get it I can't tell if it's really focusing there is a mark there but uh, you can't feel it with your fingernails so I'm gonna roll with it um, just in case I did buy a speedy sleeve for it I'm not gonna use it because don't need to basically you just put a sleeve a very small sleeve over this pound it on there it's kind of a press fit comes with a tool to put it on uh, when my hands are clean again I will actually come back and show you that and I'll probably insert the video right here what this is now this is the tool to install it and this here is a sleeve that is the part number right there KWK99181 you just slide this over the end of that companion flange uh, where the seal mates with the flange itself and you use this tool to pound it on. That's basically all it is. Um, so it's cleaned up and we're gonna put it back up in there. Um, I'm gonna stick this down there. We're gonna grab the seal and pack it with axle grease. Okay, we are packed with the good old wheel bearing and chassis grease from the napper. Here's our tool we're going to use to drive the seal in. I got the uh, thread locker in my pocket. Weapon of choice for driving the seal. So around the outside of the seal, the gasket is a seal that's kind of painted on. Sometimes that will stick to your housing here and you need to get that out. But... <clears throat> That came out pretty dang well with, with the seal on this, so uh, there wasn't much to, to get out. Let's see if we can get that thing to just stay there for a second. I did actually pre-lube with axle grease the inside lip on the seal. Just so you know that was done already. Come on. Before we put that nut on there, okay, now it's the the fun part getting this back in this spot. Smidge past the paint now. Yeah, she's still got to go a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's 
see it right there. I'm gonna go do it right up, just a smidge past the paint mark. So I'm just gonna tighten her up just a hair more and. She's nice and tight. And that's our three. Okay. She's clunking a little bit more now because there's not it's not full of fluid. I'm actually gonna go ahead and fill the fluid up while I'm before I put the drive line back on. This should already be semi loose. Okay. I will not put that back in with an impact though. If you have not filled one of these up before, you basically take that plug out right there and you know it's full when it starts leaking out of the hole. That's your fill plug. Feels the same. the test drive no new noises it is quite windy though if you're hearing anything it's it's the wind but no noises at all from the axle there weren't before but still no noises so anyway I'm gonna flip her around and head back again for watching my hair is an absolute mess I know I've been wearing that uh, beanie thank you so much for liking my videos watching my videos subscribing it's very much appreciated until next time guys peace out